Hey guys, it's Ted Bogard. Welcome back to The Ted Show. It's Monday. We're kicking off this last Monday in August. Can you all believe it? It's the last Monday in August. Uh, very excited to have, you know, I love our musical guest and Joe M is here. We're going to talk about healing and creative, creating and all sorts of amazing things. Plus, she's going to perform live for us and we're very excited about that. Welcome, Joe M. Happy Monday. Oh, hello, Ted. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. It's so I'm cool. So, I, I love the background. I think I told you. Uh, I love your presentation. It's going to be great. I'm very excited to have you. I love this title, Healing Through Creating a World of Enchantment and Music. So I definitely want to talk about that. Yes. But before we do, I told you before we went live, the audience loves an origin story. They want to know if you've always had talent. They want to know right. if you've if you've always loved and knew you wanted to do music as your career. So give us the 411 on you. Right, okay, so I'll try to be quick about this. <laughs> Take your time, it's all right. <laughs> so right, I started playing saxophone when I was about 13 or 14. And by the way, I'm from Finland, so I'm Finnish and I'm currently in Finland too so that's that's one thing is that where you're is that where you're coming to us from Finland? yes yes oh i didn't know that yeah well, that's, so it's not good morning good afternoon it's good evening for you yeah, it, is, it is good evening <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so i started playing saxophone when i was a teen i secretly wanted to sing when i was a kid like like a small kid but i was super super critical of myself so i wouldn't let anyone hear me until i was like 17 or something but anyway, I started playing saxophone and, and pretty quickly that became like like a passion and obsession. Why uh, saxophone? How did did you have somebody in your family that uh, played yeah. saxophone or why did how did you pick up saxophone of all instruments? Right. Um, well, interestingly, it was an instrument that my dad suggested that I should pick up. And then I just for some a weird reason i just went along with it, it. <laughs> and then i fell in love with it and that became a part of my identity so to speak because i was so like i was practicing every day i got into this high school here in finland that's like music uh, has a lot of music like a music line or so to speak and um and then i went after that i went to study music at the pop and jazz conservatory here in helsinki and um and that, that's when I started developing this neuropathic pain, like nerve pain all around my arms, both arms. And and like a full stop, like a halt, I, I couldn't play anymore. And that was really like, obviously that's really tough uh, physically when you're going through a lot of pain, but, but emotionally and mentally it was also super, super challenging. At first, I, I thought that was just like a, you know, a re repetitive strain injury because I was playing so much. I wasn't really taking care of my body. And um, so obviously that was like I had it coming, but um, I didn't know it at the time. Wow. So it stopped your you weren't able to play anymore because neuropathy for you guys, it's pain. It's in your, you know, you feel tingling or pain yes. and there's all sorts of things going on. And so, of course, I would imagine it would have been almost impossible, if not impossible, to continue to play the sax. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I took a time <coughs> off. I tried to, you know, get it over and done with by, you know, resting. But but then it went on for three years and, and it was a whole whole journey of trying to find solutions and trying to find the cause and, and you know, how to heal from this. And obviously because i couldn't play anymore i then i was depressed for a long time sure. and had anxiety and panic attacks and all of that that became a part of my life at the time but that led me to writing songs on my own and and singing which was the secret dream that i had when i was a kid but i was too afraid to you know actualize so, so it just the universe came together and said, "We know you can sing. We want you to sing. So we're going to figure out a way to get you to sing." Right, right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I guess that's what happened, right? So definitely. Did you? Did you? Uh, did you? Were you nervous the first time you performed? Uh, were you? Was it? A, was it a challenge, or was it just you knew this was the natural thing? This is what you should have been doing all along. 
Uh, both, I think. Both are correct. So, uh, absolutely. Of course, I was super nervous and I'm still nervous when I sing. But the first times that I actually performed with a band or like in front of a real audience, it was just, you know, really, really, you, you feel like you're naked in a sense because you've always had this instrument in front of you that you can hide behind. Yes. But now, now it's just you. It's your body. It's that's the instrument. So that's fascinating. It, it's like mentally, emotionally, it's it's a whole journey that you have to embark on after like leaving an instrument and moving on to you know using yourself as the instrument. That is so. F I've never heard it described before that way. The instrument itself, by the way, kudos because I don't know many female saxophone players. So yeah. how awesome. Uh, is that, that you have that gift. Uh, right. But I want to say, it's, you're right. I never thought about how the instrument, as a performer, the instrument almost becomes the focal point. Mm -hmm. But as a singer, it's you. It's your voice. It, that's your, You're right. That's your instrument. So that is definitely being, in my opinion, much more vulnerable to the world. Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So and it's, Tell us yeah. about your... It, it, well, it must be. So do you perform your own songs? Because you were talking about being a songwriter. Yes. And then tell us a little bit about the process of songwriting for you. Right. Okay. So it's always, it's, I think it's always different with each song that I write. Um, usually I get this uh, like a melody in my head and then I try to figure out what's this going to be about and then go about the lyrics. Sometimes then again, it's it's the lyrics that come first. And sometimes I write a poem and then I'm like, okay, I want to make this a music piece. So there's, there's so many ways to go about it. But um, usually on the day to day, there's like something you know, going on on the background and I'm, I'm making notes or, you know, recording something on my phone and, and then trying to create a whole song of the idea. And sometimes it takes more time than I'd like. And sometimes it's really quick. So so during the pandemic, did you have to, during the height of the pandemic, which I don't know how Finland is right now, but I know I'm in Florida, so we're at least a little more open. But did you have to learn ways to change the way you did songwriting? Were you a collaborative songwriter or did you do everything on your own? And so it was a good time for introspection for you. Right. Um, most of the songs I've usually written by myself, but I do have a few, like a couple people that I write with and we were luckily enough we were able to meet up like the situation was good enough here in Finland that we could meet up and in person and so that it hasn't been a huge problem obviously there's no gigs or haven't hasn't been gigs um, in a long time well this summer was a little better but, but yeah haven't been gigs in a long time have you had to shift uh, to obviously performances in person, I'm told, are the ones that really feed the artists. You're, you get that immediate uh, reaction and interaction with the audience itself. Mm -hmm. Did you have to shift to doing more performances like this, doing more Zoom yeah. and Instagram Live? And what was that like for you? Right. So I've, I've done a few, like a couple of live stream gigs on Sessions Live, which is a platform for our, uh, for music artists. And um, it, it was definitely different because you have to you have to be your sound guy. You have to do all the technical stuff at, like at the same time as you're performing. So it your attention is divided into so many things that it's kind of it, I feel like it takes something away from being present, but maybe that's just, you know, practicing it and over time getting better at it. But definitely there is a difference to having like a live audience and the, you know, the, the palpable, you know, um, exchange of energy. Yes, so, that's yeah. a great way to describe it. It's a palpable exchange of energy. You really get people who haven't performed on a stage before or spoken on a stage, doesn't have to be singing. Uh, there is this exchange with the audience that you cannot, I feel like you cannot put into words. It, it's that is the only time you're ever going to experience it right. like that. What is it like when you're performing your own song? Do you get your own songs? Do you get emotional? Does it take you back to the time? Are you able to get through? Have you ever cried on stage? Tell us a little bit about that, because it's your baby that you're birthing to the world. You're probably also want making you're wanting everyone to love 
your song as much as you do. So what's that yeah. like for you? Yes, exactly. Right, absolutely. Every song is your own baby. Of course, you may be a little more attached to some songs than others, but but they're all your babies. So definitely, it's it's a moment of being super vulnerable. But I find one of the weird struggles that I've had, perhaps because of my personality or whatever, is is this constant like analyzing and and I'm being like too much sometimes being too much inside your head thinking thinking things too much and being like how are they reacting and you know starting you know par almost feeling this um being paralyzed of you know analyzing every single reaction so that that was a completely new journey for me as well when i started singing my own songs so you know learning to let that go and learning to really really feel the song and really like um get the feeling and the story and the lyrics across rather than just you know being being inside your head analyzing everything and as you can tell from an audience i feel like as a uh, mainly audience member i can tell when people are too it's called analysis paralysis they're too inside their own yes. head and they're not feeling yes. it and i feel bad for them because i know they want to feel it but they're being incredibly hard on themselves right. before you perform you chose the word enchantment in your title. Why? Right. Um, it, it's because I'm a huge fantasy fan myself. Like fantasy movies, everything like beautiful, romantic things. Like I'm just, I'm a sucker for all of that. So I just, I just, I have this vision of somehow merging my music and that, you know, a world of my own. That's like when you step into it, you leave behind all of the pain, you leave behind all of the troubles that you've had, and you can just feel this ease and and wonder and enchantment and be just a, you know loving it and then taking that back to your your world and feeling yes. the ease and 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 you know the process of healing and letting go of the of, of pain and all the baggage that you've been you know carrying. Gorgeous. I love it. All right. So without further ado, we're going to have Joe M. You're going to perform for us. So I'm going to take myself off. Tell us what you're going to sing. Give us a little background. And then uh, everybody, right. this is Joe M. Here we go. Right. Okay. So the first song is called One Shot and it's my latest song. And um, interestingly, I actually, I sent a cold DM on Instagram to a rapper in New Jersey because I felt like this this song needs a rapper. I, I need someone to um, feature in it. And I didn't really know any rappers that well, rappers that rap in English in Finland. So I sent this cold, cold um, DM on Instagram and um, Blind Eyes in New Jersey, he agreed. And that was amazing. And, and you'll hear him rap, you know, in the background. He's not Ooh. with us right now, but anyway, uh, th that was super cool. Like collaborating remotely uh, across the pond. That was really cool. So this song is about like uh, appreciating what you really have, appreciating that. Well, for me, the relationship that you have and, and seeing our, or recommitting to it when things aren't going that smoothly, when things aren't going I love it. Yeah. All right, Joe M. Right, cool. Take your time. Sorry, sorry, that was no, take your time. Yeah, living the dream but not feeling the buzz. It was a lifelong wish come true for both of us So baby, why did the shot wear up so soon? If we had only started to see this bloom The whirlwind turns into something we call a normal life Do you still look at me like you did before the spark had died? Are we stuck in motions or on the verge of making this right? We got one shot, we got this one shot 
This turns into a million chances. Redeem us up, pick up the pieces. One shot, it's all that we got. Take my hand, remember times when we couldn't stop holding each other. I want us to find that love beyond. Find it in your eyes. We got one shot. We got this one shot. Take my hand, remember times when we started fighting and then leave it behind. Mm. And there are days we seem to do nothing right. But I can't imagine my life without you. The shit and storms, it's you I run to. You are the one that I came here to find. I know with you it's better than with anybody else. In the pouring rain, can you still put me under your spell? Come on now then, let's raise a glass. Props and downs, I wouldn't change a thing. We got one shot, we got this one shot. It turns into a million chances. Redeem us and pick up the pieces. One shot, it's all that we got. Take my hand, remember times when we couldn't stop holding each other. I want us to find that love here. Find it in your eyes. We got one shot. We got this one shot. Take my hand. Remember times when we couldn't stop putting each other. Once that. Every day we end up talking about I'm sure I'm feeling nothing Don't need nicknames Something deeper than my honey Baby muffin girl Somehow we stick around So we come on a gravity To hold us down We should treasure this And show them what we found Cause a nice day Can still have some clouds uh. I don't wanna get a sub Eternally we on a run I know we ain't done We just need that spark That electric connect In the plug Yeah we got one shot, we got this one shot. It turns into a million chances. Redeem us and pick up the pieces. One shot, it's all that we got. Take my hand, remember times when we couldn't stop putting each other. I want us to find that love here. Find it in your eyes. We got one shot. We got this one shot. Take my hand, remember times when we couldn't stop holding each other. Okay, you first of all, I liked it a lot. I'll get back to that in a minute, but so many comments. The music, the sound was low. So, what I don't think people understand is that you your tone is so right on that is very hard to sing live the way you just did that and you didn't miss a beat on the song or the tone or it was beautiful absolutely beautiful well i love it i can can i uh put a little bit more volume on the background yeah so now if you're going to do a second song yes yeah, so, but I want to tell you that that's okay. I loved it. I thought it was great. People don't understand how hard it is to perform in, genu in general. And then for what you did, that's real talent. So kudos to you. Oh, like really, you. Thank really you. great. All right. So I loved it. I like the rap part. You know, I'm never sure about rap in a song. I never know how that's going to be. That was very good. I, I really liked it, Joanne. Thank you. Really What's the name of that song? That song is called One Shot. Okay, One Shot. So, and we'll put this all in the remarks, guys. Uh, and you'll be able to reach out to Joam and you can download it. And we'll talk about that in a minute. All right, I'm going to let you uh, do the second song. Are you ready? Yeah. Tell, us what, tell us what you're singing right. and um, give us a little background. Okay, so this song is called Copper Ground or Copper Ground. And I love this song in particular because it's about like, it has a lot of autumnal... Um, images and I was inspired by all the fall colors during the fall season uh, a couple of years back and it's about like finding love in a difficult moment like finding and being surprised by that that you're finding love in a difficult spot in your life 
But for me, it's also about softening and finding that love in yourself. If you're a hard, like really hard on yourself, if you have that tendency like I have, and I've struggled with all my life, that perfectionistic tendency, um, this song for me is about that softening as well. I love that. All right, Joe M. Here we okay. go. The summer's gone by too fast. My body's pulling down, it's heavier. How long will the season last? When there's no one to make it easier. Velvet green on the background. It's raining colors in the freezing air. I can't believe it's you I found. You are so beautiful and oh, so rare. And now it's like liquid gold, all dripping so on the streets you walk on. The gold and the wind, they got nothing on you. You have the sun's warmth when it's gone. Please fall down. The swirling of yellow and brown. But all I can see is you on this cup of brown. Look at the trees, they are all undressed. Yeah, they got nothing to hide. There is something I need to confess. I try to hold it in, but I can't lie. I want to shake off the fear. Don't want to hold on to pretending. Because I believe we were right here a moment of happy ending and now it's like liquid gold all dripping so on the streets you walk on the gold and the wind they got nothing on you you have the sun's warmth when it's gone please fall down the swirling of yellow and brown but all I can see is you on the scupper. Don't mean to make this all about me, but infatuation is a real thing. I'm convinced that there is true thing. The kind of love that gets you shaking. Don't mean to make this all about me, but infatuation is a real thing. I'm convinced that there is true thing. The kind of love that gets a shake Now it's like liquid gold Who oh, dripping so on the street you walk on The cold and the wind They got nothing on you You have the sun's warmth when it's gone Liquid gold Who oh, dripping so on the streets you walk on the gold and the wind, they got nothing on you. You have the sun's warmth when it's gone. Please fall down. The swirling of yellow and brown. But all I can see is you on this cup of ground. So good. I, I'm silent because I actually, I love that song. Well, I like them both, but... You know what I love? There was a part where you you upped your ring. You went above what you normally sing. And I loved how that progression was sort of in a chorus part of yeah. the song. Yeah. When you sing that, what are you thinking? What are you feeling? Other than the fact that you've got to hold this here. And I, but when you're thinking about the words, I mean, it's, it's a lot of distractions. I know for you as an artist, but yes. I know that you still feel things. What are you thinking and feeling when you perform that? Right. Uh, in general or with this song? With this particular song, tell with us. With this particular song, I see this nature background, like in the lyrics there is the, the visual of a velvet green on the background with all the like super green trees and, and then the falling leaves. And I feel like this, the, con the contrast of the cold that's outside and the warmth I feel inside. Yeah, so good. <laughs> All right, Joe M, that was awesome. I loved every minute of it. Tell them how they can download your music, support you, find out when you're performing next, uh, right. follow you. What's the best way that they can reach out to you? Okay, so I'm most active on Instagram at Joe M Music. Um, that's where I'm most active. 
And of course, my website, um, uh, joemmusicofficial.com. There you can sign up for my newsletter and you get um, an, like an exclusive version of one shot that's not elsewhere. So you can download that for free. And um, my music obviously is on all streaming platforms if you um, type in uh, Joe M and you can see, like, tr try to look for my face. <laughs> that's, how you, that's how you're going to find me. There's Because I think there's there's at least one other Joe M and it's a guy and I think it's like a rapper from Latin, Latin America. So not to be confused. Don't look for that me. one. Look for this one. <laughs> right right so I'm, I'm pretty sure pretty confident that you're gonna find me so yeah definitely spotify um my website and um my instagram all right joe music official.com of course you can reach out to me i'll tag joe M, make sure that you can find her that was awesome thank you so much for i don't know what time it is over there eight o'clock nine o'clock it's um it's coming like half past seven now so okay so we're close but thank you for taking the time it was awesome. All right, I'll go out and support these creatives like Joe M. Uh, you know, the pandemic has done a uh, crazy thing to a lot of people who are trying to perform and get their creativity out there. So let's get behind artists like Joe M. And look, you got to see her perform two of her songs live. We thank you for that, Joe M. Come back anytime you've got something you want to debut or share. We'd love oh, to have amazing. you back. Absolutely. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank all you. right. Joe M. Music Official. You all check it out. Download and support and 